Welcome back to another series of Pooches at Play. This time though, we're going to do something a little bit different. After meeting so many proud puppy parents, we realise there's all sorts of pets roaming around people's homes. So we thought we'd introduce you to some of the Pooch's pals along the way. While the emphasis will still be on our furry friends that bark, we're going to bring you some other stories about our furry friends that purr and some that even neigh. And don't forget the feathered ones mm -hmm. and the scaly ones and the slimy ones. I mean, they're not as pretty, but they're still very valuable members of the family. That's right. So with so much more to fit into each episode, we better get started. Oh, before we do, I want to let you know that I had a lot of great feedback on all my puns last year. So this season's going to be pun-packed. Oh, well, I hope they are better than last series. Oh, well, let's let everyone at home decide. <laughs> and Mum, thank you very much for those supportive emails. They've really helped a lot. Boarding your dog or cat at a kennel whilst you go away can be a little daunting, but with a bit of preparation, it can help reduce any unnecessary stress on both you and your pet. Come on, Darth, how about we book you in, mate? <laughs> Prior to this day, make sure that your vaccinations are current and flea and worming treatment is also up to date. You will need to show proof when you check in as it's a requirement of a kennel's boarding licence. If your dog hasn't boarded before, it's important to visit the kennel first and ideally book them in for a short stay to help familiarise them with the new surroundings and the sounds. Here at Wellington Park Kennels in Melbourne, they encourage you to bring your dog in for doggy daycare before you leave them for a longer stay. That way, staff can assess the temperament and any special needs of your dogs. Let them know of any unusual habits or fears that your dog or cat may have, especially if your dog is aggressive with strangers or to other dogs, so that the staff can handle them a little more cautiously. Most kennels have different levels of accommodation and care packages. Here at Wellington Park Kennels, their five-star suites are set back a little from the noise and bustle of the main ones. Plus, they get some extras like heating and cooling, a radio and an outdoor courtyard. We would suggest these if your dog is prone to anxiety, has some health issues or is used to a bit of TLC at home. If your dog likes sharing with other dogs, they can do that here as well, and same for family pets. However, if you do have an elderly dog, we do suggest that you instead try to find a pet sitter. They can have them in their home or stay at your home when you're away so that it doesn't mess up their routine and can help reduce any stress. If your dog is on medication, it's important to supply it in a clearly labelled container and provide detailed instructions when you book in. At Wellington Park, food is supplied, but if they're a fussy eater or have a sensitive stomach or on a vet-recommended diet, then do bring along your own. Some dogs also like their own blankets and their toys for comfort too. But remember, if they're sharing with a dog like Darcy, your toy might not make it home in one piece. Check with the kennel as to what exercise is included in a standard stay, especially if your dog is young and active or requires a lot of exercise. Here at Wellington Park, every dog gets at least an hour in one of the play yards, but you can book extra walks or playtime sessions too. You can even book in some one-on-one -on -one training with a professional dog trainer to help with any obedience issues you might be having. The great thing about Wellington Park is if your dog's suitable and you're happy for them to have a little bit of extra stimulation and enrichment, they can take part in practicals with students from the National Dog Trainers Federation. In fact, this is where I did my dog training. Try not to be too emotional when leaving your fur baby as they will pick up on it. It's best to hand the lead to kennel staff and quietly slip away. Always raise any concerns you might have with kennel staff to help make the stay as stress-free as possible for both you and your pet. For more information about Wellington Park, visit their website. And for more tips, visit poochesatplay.com. I'm here with Kim and she has this beautiful boy, uh, Joe, is it? Joe. Hello, Joe. How are you, beautiful? Now, Kim, what a lot of people don't realise is that birds require a lot of looking after and care. Very much so, Guyton. They, uh, they are highly intelligent and highly sensitive creatures who live for a very, very long time. Right. Joe is currently 80 years old. So... And normal human years, 80 years of age. Lovely to meet you, sir. And he's, he will probably live in captivity as he is. He'll probably live to about 110 years of age. Wow. Yeah, very, very long time. Yep. So if people are considering getting a bird, be aware that this is a lifelong and sometimes greater than sure. a lifelong commitment. A lot of people have to leave these birds in their wills. So how did Joe come into your life? Well, I was actually um, at a rescue facility. Um, I'm a notorious bird rescuer. Sure. And um, Joe was there having come from a life with his 
old Italian nonna. Oh, he's and Italian. Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Ciao, Giuseppe. Maria. <laughs> Maria. So hey. as soon as I say Maria, his crest comes up because sure. that was her name. Yep. Unfortunately, she had passed away and she left Joe to her son. But he didn't get on with the son at right. all. And so he was then given to a rescue facility. And um, this bird was actually going to be put down because nobody could go near him. Mm. And it just so happened that maybe I reminded him of his first mum yep. and I went in and picked him up and we've been the best of mates Aww. ever since. <laughs> so who do we have here? This is Miss Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet is a six or seven year old eclectus parrot, mm -hmm. an Australian parrot. And uh, she came into my life through a friend who had to move overseas for work. Mm -hmm. It has not been an easy transition sure. for her. Um, again, these birds can live to about 60 years of age, so a huge commitment. Yep. But not only that, the eclectus parrot has a very specialised diet. They're a tropical bird, so, so different, in fact, diet completely to what this guy yeah. eats. So you've really got to know what you're doing. And um, Scarlett was really st struggling when she arrived here. And she is currently actually on antidepressants. Sure. She's actually, as you can see, she's missing a few chest feathers here. Yes. And um, that's completely as a result of over preening due to stress. So we're about to take her to an eclectus expert, mm -hmm. avian veterinarian, for a second opinion to see what else we can offer her in terms of treatment. See, it's just fascinating. A lot of people wouldn't consider this when they think about owning a pet. Absolutely. People give dog little puppies as presents and not considering the amount of care and, and that's required. And yeah. um, but when it comes to birds, it's just so much more. It's it's a huge deal. Owning a bird is a really really big deal. You've got to be prepared. Uh, for very expensive avian vet fees. Mm -hmm. um, there's no point in just having a bird and going, oh, isn't that pretty, putting it in a cage and feeding it seed and water. That's not how birds operate right. at all. They need lots of stimulation, lots of care, lots of interaction, and particularly special diets. Fantastic, Kim. Well, thank you so much for educating us more on the life Pleasure. of loving birds. And um, I don't know, I think I'm gonna have a little chat with Scarlett here. Yes. <laughs> Increasingly, pet owners want to know what ingredients are going into their dog or cat's food and where they come from. So I'm visiting Lockyer Valley Organics, just outside of Brisbane, who supply the organic vegetables that go into the big dog pet foods recipes. Yep, so we've got cauliflowers there next, and then behind that uh, the process restarts again with some more kale, and we've got broccoli over the far side. So my role is operations manager at the Organic Farm Gate. So currently we're standing on uh, a property belonging to Lockyer Valley Organics, um, which is one of five farms belonging okay. to Lockyer Valley Organics, and one of only oh, 15 or more farms that supply to the Organic Farm Gate. Mm -hmm. um, primary focus being human grade consumption into the major retailers. Okay. Um, so we're based only 15 minutes away from here, so locally as well. And so who do you supply all of these fruit and veggies to? Yep, so our primary customer Customer would be the likes of major retailers okay. in Australia, but also the whole food supermarkets. Really, it's around human consumption grade food. All right, so then it goes to Big Dog as well for our pets. Yeah. Would they be getting all of this that, that's here? Yeah, absolutely. It's really about sustainability for the grower. A large percentage of their crops are always going to look just beautiful and perfect. We've got some really good growers in our group, and a lot of the time uh, it meets that standard. But there's always going to be a little portion, I suppose, that just doesn't quite meet the retailer grade. Now, it's not because it's been treated any differently or it's not grown any differently. It's all grown to the same standards. Mm. Uh, it could really be as simple as a little damage to the skin or something along those lines when it's been harvested. And that is the sort of stock then that we're looking for a home for, which is um, our relationship with Big Dog. This is all organic, isn't it? And it's quite a process to get that certification. Absolutely. So all of our farms that we deal with are organic. We've got a couple of farms at the moment 
who are transitioning across to organic, but it is quite a lengthy process. Yes, so about 10 years, can't it? You can um, for the soil health to come through. So uh, the organic uh, stage um, can be quite a bit shorter than that, as long as you can demonstrate that you've been using organic practices, I, I suppose. But we are certified organic, so we get auditors um, that come yes. out and make sure that we're doing <laughs> can't the right thing. organic if you're not. No, that's right. So we are all certified organic, including the packing sheds. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it really is just the step of ensuring our compliance. All right, and the good stuff that we're getting. Yeah. And how do you keep then? I can hear the bees buzzing. Yeah. How do you keep the you know the pesties and the snails and all of that away? Well, hopefully we don't see too many of them, but <laughs> uh, a lot of that comes down to the soil health. So right. these growers spend a lot of time um, and quite a lot of money uh, making sure that their soil health is mm. just right. So okay. the concept, of course, is that if you've got healthy soil um, and it's good soil, then you will produce a good strong plant, right. which then produces good strong produce um, and because it's such a healthy strong plant it can naturally fight off um, I suppose pests and diseases yeah. and that kind of thing so that yeah. really is the whole concept it's just about a strong plant. Yeah a bit like us and our bodies fighting off bugs. That's right yeah. <laughs> so not only are you keeping us humans healthy with organic nutritious produce you're doing the same for our dogs with Big Dog. Yeah that's right. <laughs> if you'd like to find out more about the Big Dog range visit their website. Thanks Jacob. That's right. <laughs> Looking for somewhere to escape with your pooch? Then take a look at this week's Take Your Pet Feature Properties. Located on Queensland's beautiful Capricorn Coast, Beachfront Zilzi offers picturesque waterfront holiday accommodation. Surrounded by beautifully maintained tropical gardens and lush palms, the garden path leads right to the sand. Zilzi is located 25 kilometres south of Yapoon and 40 kilometres east of Rockhampton. There are two accommodation choices, the holiday home for larger group bookings and the cottage, ideal for a couple. Both are dog friendly, so why not bring the whole family? In a tranquil country lane leading to the beautiful Ovens River lies Tintinda Garden Cottages. They're close enough to town that you can take advantage of the wonderful delights of bright Victoria, but far away enough that you can enjoy the peace and serenity of a holiday getaway. With two self-contained cottages set amongst an acre of magnificent, fully fenced private gardens, your four-legged friends are welcome to enjoy the yard or a stroll down the lane to miles of river walks. For more pet-friendly accommodation ideas, visit the Take Your Pet website. Don't forget, you can check out all the pooches at play antics, competitions and more on our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. George and Darcy would love you to check out their Instagram pages as well. Yeah, they've got a way to go before they become Insta pooches. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They're still very cute. They are. <laughs>
Well, unfortunately, dogs and cats won't lie there patiently when we have a bunch of instruments in their mouth. Um, we do use the same equipment that your dentist would use to mm -hmm. actually get that plaque and titer off, which means there's lots of fluid flushing in the mouth as well. So to make the procedure as safe and comfortable as possible, they do need to be anaesthetised, but it's a safe thing to do for them. Fair enough. Now, what can I be doing at home in between visits to the vet? Great question. Lots of things. So you can actually brush your pet's teeth. Oh, yeah? Um, you can use a normal soft children's toothbrush or a proper pet toothbrush. Brush. I've got an old Oral B that I use to clean my shoes. <laughs> That's that... fine, whatever works yeah. for them. <laughs> and um, and what about my favourite toothpaste? Can I just use some of that? No, unfortunately not. So no human toothpastes for pets. The professional pet toothpastes are the best. They're usually chicken or beef flavoured, so nice and tasty for them as well. Ooh, you like the taste of that, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Um, and what other things can I do at home? Uh, so you can give them a special treat, so dental treats to really in increase that chewing action and get that plaque and titer off. Toys are fantastic. Sure. And also a dental diet to really help that plaque from building up. Fantastic. All right, so what can people do to take up this great pet stock offer? You can call 13 Pets to locate your local pet stock vet or go to the pet stock vet website and find your local clinic and book your appointment. Thanks, Sasha. Really looking forward to, you know, learning more about that. So is there any chance that I could get a teeth clean and a scale while we're at it? I think so. The board is free, so we'll pop you on there and get you ready. I'm next, Coops. Let's <laughs> go, mate. Meet Axel. He's a staffy that takes playing with his favourite toys rather seriously. While they might be spinning furiously on the end of his nose or the tips of his toes, he's one poised pooch. Some might say that he's not so much a smart pet as he is a cool-headed one, because no matter what distractions are going on around him, Axel manages to literally keep a level head. It might look pretty easy, but try it at home yourself, and I bet you'll end up in a bit of a spin. Think your pet has the smarts to win our Smart Pets competition? Then make sure you get your entry in. One lucky viewer will receive a Pawson prize pack valued at over two and a half grand, including a $500 pet stock gift voucher, a year's supply of pet food, a $500 HIF wellbeing and massage voucher for you, and $500 worth of family park skip vouchers. There's also three $100 pet stock vouchers for runner-ups. To enter, just send us a video of your pet doing their amazing trick. The more unique and talented, the better. So be as smart as your pet and enter to win. Visit poochesatplay.com for more details. Little Billy here, just turned 11 years old when he decided to jump out of a van without waiting to be lifted down and ruptured his cruciate ligament on impact. That must have been so hard to see. What did you do, Liz? It was hard because it obviously hurt him and he couldn't put any weight on the leg at all. So we took him no straight weight. to the vet. And, and when you got to the vet, what did they say? They knew straight away what it was, um, but not how severe. So we took him home for a few days to see if he got any better and had him on painkillers, but it didn't. So we had to have surgery. And, and with the surgery, was it a, a day procedure or, or was it quite quick? Um, it, was, it was a quick procedure. Um, he did well under an anaesthetic and it was all done in about half a day. Then he had to have a bandage on and he wasn't allowed to walk properly for about 10 weeks. So that's that sort of rehab time. Yeah. Yeah, he looks like he'd cope with that okay though. He did, and he <laughs> hasn't had any issues since, which is great. No, he's walking really well. He is. So if we have a look here, let's show you a little leg here. You can see a, a bit of a scar. I know, Bobby, I know, we're not talking about you. See that little scar there? That's where the, the surgical wound was. And they made an incision over the knee joint. And, no, sweetheart, that's the equivalent of, of our heel and, and our foot. And then this here is the, the tibia and that's the femur there. And this is the knee joint, so you can see it, it flexes like our knee joint, backwards. And the, the cruciate ligament, the anterior cruciate ligament specifically, which is was what Billy ruptured so effectively with his jump, it keeps this knee joint stable. So when I do this, it feels nice and stable. In a dog that's ruptured their cruciate ligament, the femur and the tibia if I use my hands like this, they're, they're just sliding all over the place. So it's, it's very painful. And that's why they don't put any weight on it. So in doing the surgery, 
they're re-stabilising that joint and it looks like it was super effective. Yeah, it does. Now, I know these sorts of things cost a lot of money and they come out of the blue. <laughs> did you have pet insurance? I did, fortunately. Um, I have had Billy since he was seven weeks old and when he was six I decided to get pet insurance because I thought perhaps as he got older he was more likely to need major vet treatment so it turned out really well. So from that six years when you took it out to the 11 year uh, big cruciate incident yes. did you have any other claims that you you were able to make did you have any other problems? There have been a few small things like skin irritations and infections and things. And they've all been covered pretty pretty well? They have. Yeah well that's good isn't it you're a healthy little dog and what about Bobby here? Yeah we adopted Bobby last year when she was 12 years old um, and She's gorgeous. Yeah, fortunately, we'd already had our experience with insurance, so I got insurance straight away for her. Yeah. Um, and we were able to have her covered, and we've actually already claimed on things for her. Have you? Yes. What, what's she been up to <laughs> already? <clears throat> what have you done? Huh? Uh, she did step on an insect or something <gasps> that bit her, and she had no. an, that bite on her foot. We had to get treatment for that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Liz. Thanks, Bobby and Billy, for sitting there so patiently. If you'd like to find out any more information on obtaining pet insurance for your dog or cat at any age, visit the HIF website for more information. Well, that's it for this week's show. Don't worry, though, it's only the first in a whole new series. Which means there's heaps of my fantastic jokes to look forward to. <laughs> more importantly, over the weeks ahead, we're going to be travelling around the country to bring to your living room loads of fun and informative stuff about all things pets. And I'll be getting up close and personal with some pets that I would love to have in my own backyard. <laughs> and I'm going to bring some helpful training tips so that you can practise them at home with your dog. Jeez, if Darcy's anything to go by. Hey, well, we don't always practise what we preach. Hey, he's good anyway. He's just a little bit cheeky. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week. See you guys. <laughs> Heck you later. <laughs> hey, that was funny. Not really. <laughs>